everyone, and welcome back to the Voices of Madison Park Black History Month Speaker Series, Episode 4. I'm your host, Lanai, and in this series, we are celebrating Black History Month and learning about African-American professionals who are making a difference in the Black community. We have students from MP as an audience with us today who will be a part of this conversation and will learn more about different speakers on this series. On today's episode, we are excited to have author June Archer. Let's welcome our fourth guest of the Black History Month speaker series, June Archer. Can you tell us a little bit about your industry and its message? Uh, yeah, my industry is uh, twofold, music and television. Uh, and I would say the message in there is trying to find a way to inspire and motivate as many people and in this case, as many students as we can with both of those mediums. Mm -hmm. And um, what's the driving force behind creating an R&B group, Room Service? Mm. Well, the, the, the inspiration in that, I was in uh, middle school at the time. And at that time, I had inspiration and the desire to become Michael Jackson mm -hmm. and also New Edition, right? Mm -hmm. At that time, growing up, New Edition was the big boy band of, of of my time and we mm -hmm. wanted to emulate ourselves like New Edition. So we created a, a R&B group in middle school called Junior Edition, mm -hmm. um, kind of almost based off of me because my name was June, people called me Junior. Mm -hmm. And that spawned Junior Edition and from there, we went on doing talent show after talent show until one day we had the opportunity to win a contest that allowed us to go to the world famous Apollo Theater. And that's how we got discovered. It was at the Apollo Theater um, performing in front of a, a sold out audience. And then from there, few years later got a record deal so wow. that was the inspiration for starting out where we were and we were in jazz show choir at the time a lot of you call it glee club now mm -hmm. but our goal was just like man we want to see ourselves on stage and on television want to hear our record on the radio and it took some years but we were able to do that and that was the success of room service mm -hmm. and that's amazing um well how did you become acclimated with the various artists that you aspired to be and worked with? Well, one of the things I love to, to share with the audience and, and, and those who are watching, like I always found the opportunity to network with people. You know, in my era, it was like shake hands, kiss babies, rub elbows. Mm -hmm. And I never leave the opportunity undone to meet someone new every day if I can. And me, with me meeting new people along the journey, it allowed me to meet people who were on my record label like Busta Rhymes or Missy Elliott or MC Light brand new being P Rock, CL Smooth. Mm -hmm. And then it also allowed me to meet people like Mary J. Blige or The Locks or Chris Rock. Wow. But it was just a matter of just always introducing yourself, telling people who you are, asking people who they were and what, what it is that they did. And just taking that networking approach and it, it yielded what you see today in terms of being able to interview and work with all these multiple genre artists. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's that's amazing. Um, well, can you tell us a little bit about your books and um, why you wrote them? Well, my first book uh, is called Yes, Every Day Can Be a Good Day, The Keys to Success That Lead to an Amazing Life. And in 2010, the music started to sound a little different. I went from being a recording artist in room service to an executive. And as an executive, I had the opportunity to work with Jay-Z, Beyonce, Chris Brown, Mario, Marion, Jim Class Heroes, 50 Cent. And I stepped away from the music business to kind of take a break and look at what was going on in social media. Mm -hmm. And I just saw a lot of negativity yeah. out there, you know, people yeah. complaining about having to wake up and go to work, having to deal with a spouse, children. And I said, for a year straight, I just want to put out a positive message on social media every day. So I did that every day for 365 days. And during that time, I was filming a TV show on Fuse called uh, the docu-series, which mm -hmm. was an independent show about producers and artists trying to make it in the music and entertainment business. And in one of the episodes, I talk about wanting to write this book. And in doing so, 2013, I come out with this book and I get the opportunity to go on tour with Trent Shelton and Eric Thomas, E.T., the hip hop preacher. And it was just a way to take everything that I had written on social media and put it in a book. But that was from the encouragement of people who are on my social media platforms mm -hmm. and would see this and say, you should actually write a book. And I turned that down for a while because I'm like, I just want people to just see the glass half full 
in life right. instead of half empty. Yeah. And after that book did well, I literally said to myself, I want to catch people early. So I created a children's version of the book called Yes, You Can, mm. which is now a children's book of inspiration. That's great. That's amazing. Um, well, we noticed that you have your podcast, as you were briefly talking about. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what led you to creating that? On the heels of putting out the two books, mm -hmm. I went to a friend, once again networking, and asked him, hey, you're working with 50. Is it possible? Can I do some 60-second inspirational videos mm -hmm. on thisis50.com? He was like, I guess so. Let's, let's try it and see how it works. And I did maybe 20 of them at the time. And one day, Tony Yayo, who was part of G-Unit, who just mm -hmm. went on tour yeah. with 50 Cent, he was in an office. And this is right around when Donald Trump was trying to run for president. And we had just had a conversation about it. He was speaking so intelligently about it. And I said, Yayo, can I come, can I interview you? Because I want people to know that you, you're pretty smart, right? You know what you're talking about, but right. you had this perspective about Donald Trump, and you say he's going to get elected, and a lot of us don't think he's going to get elected. I want to talk about it. Yeah. And he came in the studio like this, and we had an interview. It was my first interview with a guest. And it, like, it went viral in the hip-hop community, and I'm like, ooh, I think I got something here. Mm -hmm. And then I started reaching out to my friends, Styles P, Amari Hardwick, who played Ghost in Power, and I would just ask them to come in the studio to do interviews with me. And every interview just kept going up. 1,000, 2,000 to the point where uh, a million plus, maybe like 1.5 million people started to pay attention to these interviews. And then I knew like I, I have something here, like people paying attention. They didn't want something different. Yeah. People weren't just interested in just all the negativity. They wanted some real stories from people that they knew and how to navigate life. Right. Yeah. So that's how that started. Yeah, that's great. Um, well, can you tell us um, who are like a few people that you look up to? few people that I look up to, it's, my list is interesting because mm -hmm. I'm looking at the people who I would like to have a portion of, I would love to have all the success that they have, right? Mm -hmm. But just a portion of uh, what they've gained up to this point. You look at Oprah Winfrey, you look at Jay-Z, you look at obviously 50 Cent, but I get to work with him uh, indirectly with just being on his platform. Yeah. Um, but to hear their stories, the only person I haven't met to speak to is Oprah, but I've had conversation with Jay-Z and he's inspired. I've had, obviously, conversation with 50 Cent. These are the, the people I look up to as creatives and business people because they're doing it at a high level. Yeah. You know, it'd be great to say, oh, man, like, obviously, my parents, you know, mm -hmm. being, you know, a West Indian, being uh, immigrants coming to this country, there's definitely a lot to look up to. Yeah. Um, but their dreams, in terms of me realizing what they did, I've surpassed that already, right? They came here with, with a, a certain vision and certain plans. But we far exceeded that already um, mm -hmm. in, my, in my generation and in my lifetime that I'm like, all right, I need something bigger and broader to do. But also I'm trying to do it now at a level where I inspire and motivate, you know, those are in this room. Right. Because that's what it's really about. Legacy. Mm -hmm. It's about inspiring young people to put the combinations together to be successful. Right. No matter right. what it is that they want to do in life, give them the combinations that they could go out, plant seeds and and be dope people in their community yeah that's great um well how do you keep such a positive energy and such a positive vibe when giving out when when being in a society where there's negativity surrounded around you i'll tell you how easy it is for me and mm -hmm. how easy it could be if one would only allow themselves to take on this perspective. Mm -hmm. uh, I just finished watching One Love, the Bob Marley movie, right? Mm -hmm. Amazing movie. But one of the things that I always tell people is the minute you wake up in the morning, right? That moment that you wake up, it's a great day. Like you, you made it here. There's somebody somewhere yeah. that didn't wake up this morning. There's somebody somewhere who have woken up and they won't make it to the day. Somebody that woke up, made it through the day, but won't make it home. But the minute we wake up, if you leave with gratitude, that works, right? And as I'm watching exactly. the Bob Marley movie, he talks about it in the great record that we hear, right? Don't worry about a thing. He starts out like I'm waking up in the morning, right? Yeah. To the rising sun. Yeah. Like the minute you wake up, if you can adopt that thinking and that, that perspective, mm -hmm. every day can be a good day, like my book says, right? Yeah. Bad things can happen to, to good people. Unfortunate things will happen. 
But the minute you wake up, you have the opportunity to do anything you want yeah, in life. Yeah, that's that's the blessing from God. Being Absolutely. able to wake up in the morning. Absolutely. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Um, well, what are some challenges that you have went through throughout your career? One of the, the biggest challenges was actually losing my record deal. Because mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't a fault of the group. It was a fault of one particular individual. Mm -hmm. And the lesson from that is never allow someone to block your blessing. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That that is a but it was a big obstacle because we worked so hard up to that point to get to that. Yeah. That space. I literally turned down a soccer scholarship, right? To stay local so I could get a record deal. And here it is, I get the record deal because of one person and them being selfish, you lose that whole momentum of the dream that you were working so hard for. Yeah. So that was the biggest obstacle and the biggest lesson that I learned is don't allow other people to block your blessing. And, and like Nipsey Hussle said, everybody can't come. Mm -hmm. Everybody yeah. can't come. Yeah, so. that's great. Well, thank you for that message. Don't let anybody block your blessing. For Absolutely. sure. Um, well, where would you see yourself in 10 ish years? Like, where do you where do you want to see yourself? That's a that's a great question, right? And I don't always like answer that question because I like to live in the moment. But for me, if you go back to the pandemic, right? Uh, I had an opportunity to teach in this school as an enrichment program, and this was a time where my friends who were DJs or photographers or filmmakers they couldn't work, right? Mm -hmm. Because everything was shut down. Yeah. I couldn't do anything outside because some of the things I do uh, allow me to speak in front of a uh, large amount of people, yeah. big venues or do events. And when I had the opportunity to speak in this school, I was talking to kids about exactly what we're experiencing right here, arts and entertainment, and telling them about my story and my journey in music. And at the end of that class, my friend says to me, you should start a school program. And I'm like, what would I call it, the June Archer School of Arts? He was like, that sounds good. And that birthed the June Archer School of Arts program during the pandemic. And we're now in 18 schools. And Madison Park is the 19th school that I began teaching in last September. And I'm like, all right, so 10 years from now, not only would I like to triple that number, but I would love to just have a campus where you can do DJing, graphic design, filmmaking, photography, animation, and podcasting in one school called the June Archer School of Arts. So that's what 10 years from now looks like to me. Okay. So giving back to the youth and the community. Absolutely. And creating, and creating the perspective that you could do this for a living. Like the, the students that are behind the scenes, behind the cameras, doing the audio, doing the interviews, mm -hmm. can actually realize this as a dream and not just think that you, know, you have to be Jay-Z and Beyonce. You could be behind the scenes making just as much money, if not more money, than some of these artists. Yeah. Wow. Um, what is some advice that you would give to any students that or children that want to be in the career path that you have or that are involved with media arts? I would say follow your dreams, but dream, dream big, mm -hmm. right? Dream so big that it scares you. A lot of people say that. And you might hear it. It sounds cliche. But every opportunity I've had, I thought larger than life. And I was able to, to, to do it. Yeah. And that, to me, frightened me that, man, the dream that I had came true. That's scary. Like, so what if I wanted to actually write a book? Right. I ended up writing two. I'm working on my third. And I'm like, shoot, what would it look like if I had my own clothing line? I got that too. What would it look like if I actually created a shoe line? I'm on my third shoe. What would it look like if I created two TV shows? I ended up doing four. But it kept scaring me. I'm like, shoot, and there's nothing I can't do. So I just implore any young person in the audience, anybody who's watching or listening, mm -hmm. Think about something and create something that, that scares you that, what if it does work? What happens? Yeah. That's, that's crazy, right? Yeah, that's crazy. But it, is, it can happen. It can happen. So my advice is uh, dream big, think big, but work hard for it because mm -hmm. nobody can take it from you. You know, Rick Ross said, it. nobody's going to see you shooting in the gym. But when the time comes and you get the opportunity and you get that break and you're ready, like it's great. Sometimes I tell young people, sleep with your shoes on so you ain't got to get ready. Yeah. Right? Because you never know when your next opportunity is going to come. Exactly. So. Yeah. Um, well, now we're going to open up the microphone to my fellow peers in the audience to ask some questions about your blog. 
and your community activism. Don't be shy. Questions? Comments? Oh, somebody will be coming Thoughts? around with the microphone. Right here. Oh, I'm just asking a, like a general question. Do you have any regrets in your life? I'll tell you this. One of the things that I've learned on my journey, and I, I want to say I heard it somewhere, or at least a portion of it somewhere. If you change one thing, you change everything. And I think about that at times when I'm looking at watching the World Cup, and I see these soccer players doing great things. And I'm like, man, the money that they're making and they got an Adidas contract and I'm an Adidas guy. I'm like, man, what if I stayed and got that, you know, kept that soccer scholarship and played soccer? What, what if, right? But when you look at that, what if, I wouldn't have met the people I've met on my journey and been able to be friends with some of the biggest stars on this planet, right? That I could, I look at the Grammys as an example uh, last weekend and I'm like, Know that person, I could call him and text him right now. Know that person, did a record with that person, performed with that person, been on tour with that person, mm -hmm. talked to that person last week, right? And I'm like, it's a life where some people can't say they've ever done that. But if I played soccer, would I have had these relationships? I don't know. So I wouldn't change anything. I don't have any regrets. I wish I probably had more opportunity or just said, man, if I would have worked hard on this, maybe, but no regrets. At, at, at all, because I wouldn't have been where I am today. My path would have took me somewhere different. Go ahead. Have you worked with Chris Brown? Actually, I have worked with Chris Brown. I worked with Chris Brown uh, right before he got his record deal and when he started working on his first album. I work with Chris Brown in the studio. Uh, he and I um, just uh, powwowing and, and just, big, just seeing exactly the artist that he was, right? And it was a, a great opportunity to just be on the ground level with Chris Brown. So that was, that was really, really dope. Yeah. And like, he's a friend, like, you know, so um, just based on the relationship that we created when we first started working together. Thank you for that question. Um, do you got do you got do you got any advice for like uh, a young man, you know, coming into high school? Absolutely. Uh, one of the things I think is is really amazing is the opportunity that you have in school. I'm a big advocate of education uh, for many reasons, right? It's not for everybody, but it is a foundation for what it is that you want to do. If you want to be an athlete. You have to learn how to read contracts. You got to learn how to count your money. You got to learn how to read plays. If you want to be a musician, same thing. Reading the contracts, counting your money, reading music, knowing exactly where you're going throughout life. Uh, for a young man who's trying to navigate uh, the four years of school, right? Just high school. We're just talking about high school. One of the great things that you have the opportunity to do besides learning and being educated is creating relationships and friendships that may last you a lifetime. And those are the things in the foundation that you can have that's going to take you well beyond these, these four years or these walls. Because I have relationships that I've had since actually elementary school, right? That are people or friends that they're part of your village. So while you're here, create a village of people that will hold you accountable, that are like minds. And when I say like minds, they're not yes men or yes women. They are there to help you in times when you're like, man, I don't know if I'm going to make it through my freshman, sophomore, junior, or if I'm going to get ready to graduate. They'll hold you accountable, right? They help you when you are at your lowest, and they applaud you when you're at your highest. So make sure you create, cultivate, develop, nurture those relationships here, 
because those are going to be the adults. You all will be adults at some point that will be able to lean on each other and be a generation that could be a force to be reckoned with. That was a really great question. Don't be shy. Come on, I'm, I'm here to, to, even if I don't know the answers, we're going we're gonna to figure it out. All right. Okay. Um, well, now the show is coming to an end. Um, we hope everybody has taken something away from this Black History Month speaker series. For the next episode, we have Reggie Brown, author of What Happened to the Playbook. Thank you for joining us today um, on this episode, and we'll see you next time. Have a great day.